So uh, with, uh, without further ado, uh, over to you, Pernilla. Welcome. Thank you so much, Daniel, and uh, uh, thank you for joining the seminar uh, today. We're going to talk about tax fairness and sustainability, a matter of legitimacy, as Daniel just said. And uh, the reason for why I chose this topic is based on uh, my previous and current research. Um, when I started my research, I started on indirect taxes and uh, changes in the taxation of the digital economy. And uh, one of the things that uh, surprised me when I uh, did my uh, doctoral studies was that it's really, really difficult with uh, the understanding of different uh, terms and concepts um, in, in the comparative situations where we have cross-border situations, even if we speak the same language, such as English, because we have different cultures and different understandings and of both how to interpret and apply the legislation in each case. And um, as I've continued doing research, uh, I realized that this is a common problem and also the different values underlying these concepts and terms um, are often used as a political means of trying to reach an understanding when wanting to coordinate uh, tax legislation, both on an international level and uh, a regional level, such as within the EU. Uh, so today I want to problematize the concept of tax fairness and also relate it to studies are done on sustainability, what do we need for a tax policy to be sustainable uh, and if that uh, affects what we think is a legitimate tax system or not. And since this is uh, within uh, the FREM seminar series, uh, I'm going to use examples based on environmental taxes, particularly in Sweden, where we try to uh, tax different sorts of chemicals in different ways and see how we perceive these different uh, concepts and if the taxes as such are seen as sustainable uh, if they affect sustainability and underlying values of sustainability and if we perceive them as legitimate or not. So I'm hoping that I will pose a lot of questions today and maybe not as many answers more problematize these different um, uh, structures within the tax system and see how they relate to each other. So let's see first how we can understand tax fairness. It is a, a wide concept and there is a lot of research discussed on, on fairness as such in general within law. And also when we talk about ta tax fairness, we need to understand that within the tax systems, we have different sorts of taxes and tax fairness means different things depending on which type of tax we talk about. So if we start with the general concept of tax fairness, it's often researched from an, an income tax perspective when we talk about how to tax individuals and businesses. We also talk about it when we want to tax different goods and services from a value added tax perspective, different indirect taxes. And from that perspective, we often understand tax fairness as that we want to tax uh, a subject, goods or services, an individual or a business income uh, with the correct amount in the correct state at the right time. Uh, we want to provide a, a equity at the same time as we want to strive for equality, meaning that uh, similar situations should be taxed in a similar manner when it comes to comparing businesses, individuals. And from a VAT perspective, which is a bit closer to when we talk about environmental taxes, we want to tax goods and services in a similar manner so that we can have a functional equivalent system. Uh, in this case, we also want to avoid uh, double taxation, which is seen as unfair. Uh, at the same time, also non-taxation is seen as unfair. However, when we talk about environmental taxes, uh, we need to um, remind ourselves that Besides the fiscal purpose of a tax, we also have the environmental purpose for why we want to differentiate between different sorts of goods, depending on how harmful they can be to the environment, for example. And when we have a non-fiscal purpose, it's important from a legal perspective that that non-fiscal purpose is shown not only in the legislation as such, but also when we interpret and apply the legislation in each individual case. And of course, uh, one of the reasons for using environmental taxes is to try to change the behavior of actors of the market. Um, and this can also be based on principles such as polluter pay principles. And when we talk about environmental justice, that we want to safeguard 
the environment um, and change the behaviors on, of the actors depending on how much they pollute or how, harm, how harmful goods they use. Um, when we consider environmental taxes in, in Sweden, um, we have two recent examples that we can mention. One is the tax on chemicals in, in certain electronic goods, such as refrigerators, computers and cell phones. Uh, that is one of the first chemical taxes introduced in, in Sweden. And the main purpose with that tax was to try to minimize the use of harmful flame retardants. And the way it was structured is that we used uh, the different uh, qualifications of goods based on custom codes and so on. So um, it's difficult to try to pinpoint uh, a particular chemical. Uh, so instead of pinpointed certain goods where these flame retardants are used. Uh, another example of a tax is uh, the tax on plastic bags in, in Sweden, where um, the aim was to try to minimize uh, microplastics in the environment. So try to minimize the use of plastic bags. And uh, from a legal perspective, uh, then they did no difference in between if it was uh, based on um, biodegradable plastics or if it was used of uh, plastics that have been used before. So um, the main aim was not maybe to di di differentiate between different sorts of plastic bags, but to try to minimize the use of plastic bags. Penilla, uh, just a, a question. Are you showing more slides than this, uh, the first one? Or? Yes. Okay, because it's not rolling. If you are, we are still on the how can we understand tax fairness? Yes, I'm still on this first point. Environmental okay, taxes great. Compared to other taxes. Perfect. Yes. Thanks. Uh, so these examples of um, the tax on plastic bags and on the tax on electronic, um, uh, certain electronic products, I will come back to them as I continue to explain uh, tax fairness and how it can be understood uh, in relation to these uh, taxes and also from a sustainable uh, sustainability perspective and then relate back to the question of legitimacy. From a state perspective, of course, uh, the state perspective when we talk about tax fairness is that the state has the right to choose the form in how they want to to tax uh, their individuals and businesses that are located or are doing businesses within the state and also different goods and services that are used within that state. There are also different levels of environmental protection and from a state perspective, there's also a difference depending on if we talk about Sweden, which is an EU member state, or if we talk about non-EU member states and depending on how much of and the sovereignty that has been handed over to uh, the EU in our case, uh, compared to non-EU countries. And when it comes to, to taxes, uh, different environmental taxes have not been harmonized that much at an EU level uh, yet. However, there are a lot of state aid issues related to environmental taxes that have been discussed at an EU level. From a business perspective, uh, one of the main concerns, of course, for businesses is that they usually are the ones that are tax liable for these uh, environmental taxes and uh, from their perspective tax fairness means that they want to be treated equally compared to other businesses and also if there are possibilities of reduction schemes within these different environmental taxes where you can have a reduced tax rate or you can get a tax return depending on if you uh, can show that your goods aren't as harmful as as other uh, goods or that you're trying to minimize the use of harmful goods within your uh, business, uh, then of course also those schemes of getting a reduction needs to be fair uh, and being able to uh, uh, be used both by smaller companies and larger companies. So how can we then understand tax fairness if there is uh, a difficulty in trying to uh, get a scope of fairness uh, from an environmental tax perspective. Well, uh, I've tried to problematize this from um, the UN sustainability goals perspective. And uh, a colleague of mine, Katarina Nordblom, who is uh, a professor in economics, we wrote a paper together a couple of years ago where we identified different challenges within the UN sustainability goals for how to reach sustainable tax policies. 
and uh, we identified uh, three different basic values um, in the different sustainability goals. It's equity and equality, that is the first basic value, then environmental protection, and uh, the third is coherence. And all these three are relevant when we talk about how to try to create more legitimate and fair environmental taxes. And just to explain shortly these different values, because they um, affect how we understand tax fairness. Uh, when we talk about equity and equality, um, there are three different types of equity and equality that can be identified within the UN Sustainability Goals. Uh, at the top of this triangle, uh, I've written environmental equity and equality, which refers to that uh, we need to safeguard the environment, uh, the environment and also um, uh, different species within uh, the environment and not only the human life, um, both when it comes to how to re, uh, redistribute sources between different states and also how to create equality for different actors on the market to try to uh, strive for a larger degree of equity and equality and then not only think about legal and economic equity or equality but also environmental equity and equality. And for example, uh, this can uh, be shown in uh, the, th the 13th uh, SDG when it comes to combating climate changes, which is one of the most obvious uh, SDGs when it comes to environmental protection in forms of equity and equality. When you talk about uh, uh, the economic perspective, we all can talk about redistribution within the SDG. And when we talk about environmental taxes related to uh, economic equity, uh, the aim of an environmental tax is to try to change uh, and redistribute different sources in the sense that more harmful goods and services should be taxed harder, whereas less harmful goods and services are not taxed with that tax at all. Uh, however, within that system, we still need to strive for legal equality, meaning that we want to uh, treat different individuals and goods and services equally. Of course, legal equality in the SDGs uh, often also refers to gender equality and how to try to strive for uh, institutions and a society that can safeguard how you can protect your rights and fulfill your obligations under the different tax systems. So the, uh, both the economic equality and legal equality of wider concepts than what I've explained now. I'm just trying to refer them to the environmental taxes in, in this presentation. The second basic value is then uh, the environmental protection and uh, at the top here uh, I wrote human life uh, and the reason for why we wrote human life in the top of this is that uh, it's not an anthropocentric uh, view of the society but the, the only actor on, on the market or uh, on earth is the human who can try to safeguard sustainability and environmental protection. Uh, businesses are uh, then actors uh, that legally have, may have an obligation, but also individuals that may have uh, a legal obligation to try to protect the environment through different regulations, prohibitions, and also when it comes to the environmental taxes, they are the ones becoming tax liable. The environmental protection then uh, also have values related to SDGs where you want to increase the technological development to try to minimize uh, the burden on the environment and also preservation of, for example, endangered species. When it comes to technological developments, I think an interesting example here is how uh, the tax on plastic bags was introduced, uh, because there had been a lot of research on trying to improve plastic bags uh, and also make them more sustainable in the sense that they could be used several times and also that they could be uh, biodegradable. Uh, however, uh, with the tax as it is um, structured now, all plastic bags um, are subject to tax and due to that all, pla uh, all plastic bags produce microplastics. Uh, so even if we have uh, a basic value in the SDGs where we want to strive for technological development to try to improve uh, and protect the environment, in, in this case when it comes to the tax on plastic bags, the aim was not to try to improve technological development, but to try to minimize microplastics and then 
they made no difference in between which type of plastics that were used. When it comes to coherence, um, from an international perspective, uh, then coherence often means that we want to have a legal cooperation between different member states. And uh, to most uh, or everyone that are present here, of course, the environment is, is global and um, the legislations that we talk about are often national or maybe regional. And sometimes we have international treaties uh, affecting uh, also the international arena. Uh, and to create a legal cooperation, we need to try to have a coherence in how we understand the problem that we want to regulate and also how we understand the regulation that we introduce to try to combat the problem. Uh, and also another value that is found related to coherence is still the need for economic growth, also found in SDG 8. Uh, and the economic growth is also then seen as a mean to try to reach sustainability if it is in line with the basic values, meaning also that it needs to uh, consider the environmental protection, uh, equality and equity, and not um, put economic growth as the primary point to reach sustainability. However, when we want to understand the problem that we want to regulate, we also need to understand that from a local point of view, meaning that what could be um, a sustainable solution in, in Sweden might not be sustainable in, in a development country. And uh, we might not have institutions that can use environmental taxes to introduce them in, in a legal form and also have a, a correct application of them in different states. So trying to understand the problem from a local point of view is um, a basic value that we need to uh, understand when we talk about how uh, environmental taxes can be seen as fair or less fair. So if we try to go back to the question that brought us here today, how does the notion of fairness affect legitimacy? Um, we have to ask ourselves a number of questions. Uh, first of all, how do we set the aim with different environmental taxes? And the two examples that I mentioned in the beginning, and when we talk about um, the taxes on chemicals in certain electronic products, then the aim was to minimize the use of uh, dangerous flame retardants. However, after a couple of years now, when it has been in force, we have seen also uh, suggestions from, uh, for example, a tax authority in Sweden and, and Kimi that um, uh, there are still a lot of dangerous flame retardants that aren't affected by the current legislation. So there, there needs to be a different structure uh, in how we try to pinpoint the subject that we want to tax uh, in, in that perspective. Uh, so the aim with the environmental tax is crucial if we want to implement that into how we define the subject that we want to tax. And that is usually quite problematic and it's shown quite um, apparently when we talk about the tax on chemicals in certain electronic products. If we compare it with the tax on plastic bags, which has uh, been under a lot of criticism um, because it hasn't made differences between different types of plastics, still if we compare it to the aim of, of the legislation, we will want to minimize uh, microplastics in nature, then still that aim is safeguarded with the current um, concepts in the legislation. So from a legal perspective, trying to relate the structure and, and the subject of the tax to the aim, it is crucial because when we talk about environmental taxes and for example, from an EU perspective, uh, having a clear environmental aim uh, that we want to safeguard in the environmental tax, that is one of um, the criteria that we use when we want to see if uh, an environmental tax at a national level is um, uh, falling under the state aid rules or not, if it is legal or illegal. Uh, so one key issue, if we want to perceive uh, a tax as fair is that we have a clear environmental aim and that we can then can transform it into a clear subject that we want to tax. Another question which uh, affects the notion of fairness is also how the aim and the subject that we have identified in the different taxes, how that is interpreted and applied in both individual cases, and also if we try to compare different cases. Uh, 
if the aim is not fulfilled in the application of the legislation, even if we can see that structure of the text uh, could um, uh, be linked to the aim, then of course we have a, a problem that the actual application is not in line with what the legislator intended from the beginning. So we need to be uh, aware of how we interpret and how we apply the tax. Uh, and um, what we perceive as fair from that perspective might be, for example, not only how we pay the tax, but also if we have the right to certain reductions of the tax, if we try to have less dangerous flame retardants, for example, uh, or if we can show that we have tried to change our business structure so that we um, have a possibility to get a reduction. However, when you talk to different companies um, that are tax liable, both for these taxes and also the tax on clothing that has been discussed, chemicals and clothing, is that it's often problematic for companies when a new tax is introduced because they have to change their system for how they make their accounting, of course, but also they have to safeguard the information that is needed um, so that they can get a reduction of which chemicals that are used, where they're used, and so on. Uh, of course, the, it's their responsibility to be able to produce those informations. However, uh, some of the companies, um, they, they say that it's so costly to try to gather this information, so it's less costly just to pay the tax in full instead of applying for a reduction. And if that is the case, uh, uh, then the problem with the tax is that it will not affect the behaviors of the actors on the market in, in the way it was intended because the companies then will calculate the full tax rate as a cost within the business and then they can continue doing their business so if an environmental tax uh, has to be perceived as fair then it also has to uh, consider the consequences of the compliance costs for both tax liability, but also um, the possibility to ask for a reduction if you have the right to such a reduction, uh, and also uh, how it actually will affect the behaviors of the companies that produce, import, or, or sell the products that are taxed. Um, if we perceive these as problems where um, the taxes become unfair, it's most likely that they will be seen as illegitimate. And if environmental taxes, some of them are seen as Ill illegitimate, then it will be more difficult politically to introduce new environmental taxes with the same structure. So um, we need to consider uh, the different levels of how we perceive tax fairness, both when it comes to the aim of the taxes how they are uh, transferred into the different criteria, for example, what is the subject to tax, and also um, how the structure for those that are tax liable uh, is used and the compliance costs for actually trying to, to get a reduction if you have a right to such a reduction. And also uh, consider the consequences so that the environmental taxes not only have a fiscal purpose of having um, uh, a new tax base, but also actually change the behavior of the actors on the market. Um, so these are some of the critical points that I have found of um, and the different taxes that I've been speaking about shortly. Uh, and uh, I will now leave the floor open for questions. So thank you for listening.